Good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to Advanced Higher Chemistry. This is the first in a series of three videos we're going to do on organic analysis techniques. So if you want to uh, analyze organic molecules, then basically these three are your holy grail of figuring out what on earth you're dealing with. Often used in conjunction with each other because they measure slightly different things. The first thing, the first video we're going to do is about mass spectroscopy. Um, what is mass spectroscopy? Well, basically mass spectroscopy is you take yourself an organic molecule, you fire really high energy electrons at it, and these electrons will knock off electrons off this molecule. Well, that's one effect they can have. So, you, for example, you turn it into a large uh, positively charged what's called molecular ion, but you don't do anything else to it initially. If you continue to hit it with high energy electrons, what you can start to do is you can start to fracture this molecule into little chunks. Um, a bit like me throwing Lego spaceships down the, st the stairs when I was a child uh, and watching them break into pretty little chunks at the bottom. Or was that just me? Anyway, um, so here's a molecule. You could, for example, you could have the whole molecule as one ion. Um, you could have a little chunk of a CH3 with a positive charge. That would also be a, a fragment, as they're called. Um, uh, and then what you do is you uh, collect these fragments uh, in a detector and you end up with a graph that looks something similar to uh, this. So here we have a mass spectrum for a compound. Um, and the, the first thing to, the, the two things to get from these mass, mass spectra are first of all, seek out the right hand most line. Um, if you have a look, at the bottom here, it's M to Z, which is the mass over the charge, um, which is what we tend to label the bottom axis as. Effectively, it's, it's the mass. So it's like the GFM. Um, and up here, we have the abundance and, you know, how many of there is of each particular fragment. That's not used so much. Um, but the most useful thing possibly you can get from a mass spectrum is the right-hand most peak, which tells you instantly what the GFM of your molecule is. Uh, so that would be the first piece of information. And in fact, uh, this is a C from continue, uh, continuation. So we'll have a look at that in a second. Um, but that's that's what I would get first. Um, and also, I don't ask it very often, um, but you can have a two plus charge. So in theory, you should also get perhaps peaks at 36 which of course is the whole molecular ion just divided by a charge of two here. Um, and these are all smaller fragments of this molecule that has broken off. So this, this was a molecule with multiple C's and H's uh, and an O as well and a couple of O's as well. We'll come back to it another day. So we're looking for a possible ion fragment that has a mass of 27. Well, if you're seeing C's and H's and O's and stuff like that, you can try jiggling about a variety of combinations until you can come up with a certain chunk that would have a GFM of 27. I'm seeing two carbons there, 24, you know, C2, um, which leaves you with three H's. So basically, something like that. Um, they probably want you to put the positive charge on it. Let me just check... Yes, they do, in fact. So, yeah, that is a prerequisite. They want you to know that the ion fragment has got positive charge on it. So, uh, that's pretty much mass spectroscopy. Let me see if there's any outcomes I didn't cover. Nope, that's it. Short and sweet for mass spectroscopy, folks.